So I'm Emma Smith. I teach at the University of Oxford. Hi, I'm uh, Jill Woods and I teach at Beck University of London. So Jill, what, what, what online teaching are you doing? How's it, how's it going? Yeah, so um, we had a very hasty start at the end of last term and so we, we transferred everything online. We've been doing some seminars, some lectures, some supervision. So we've got a, a real kind of range of group sizes, some one-to-one, uh, some kind of seminar groups of about, uh, well they range from about five to about 20 uh, and then the much bigger lectures. How about you? Yeah, actually, same, same, same for us. So we, um, yeah, we've had to record a load of lectures, um, and then our, uh, so they're they're all sort of in the bank. That's how we, we we had to do it. We had to do it that all uh, sort of over the Easter time. And now, yeah, we're in kind of seminar groups, which I guess for us are five to 15 maybe and then um yeah one-to-one -one or s sort of supervisions or uh, graduate sort of supervision so yeah pr pretty similar are you using the same um platforms for all of those um it's um mostly uh so for, for kind of phd students we've actually just been using sort of skype or whatever sort of suits them best um but yeah so we have um a platform it's it's blackboard via moodle i don't know do you use moodle is that a, a more widespread no, no, we use camps, camps. yeah yeah um so so the main form that we've been using for live sessions is something called collaborate which i think might be similar in many of its sort of functions to something like teams or even zoom so you can have a group of people uh, having a live session uh, you can choose to see one another or you can hide your videos um, but it also has sort of extra functions which are quite nice so you can sort of use a raise hand emoji um, you can have uh, a chat function running along the side and you can share slides and uh, your screen but when you share your slides one of the things that's quite nice is uh, the students can then write on it which you don't necessarily want to advertise at the beginning of a lecture but it does mean um, that then you can kind of post up questions and get people to kind of be a bit more interactive that way that sounds great. Do you, how are you using the chat? Because I think you're right, all of these things um, have got a kind of uh, written chat. It's funny how all the words have gone kind of weird, isn't it? So there's the actual talking chatting part, which is online, and then there's chat, which is written. Um, it's some, in some sessions, that's been a really, that for me, that's been a really great um, way, actually, sometimes to bring in quieter, students who can't quite pitch themselves into the moment in the discussion or to sometimes to go back to an issue that someone's posted up and and sort of think yeah we didn't quite finish that out earlier on in the discussion and sometimes i've found it completely impossible to keep an eye on chat to yeah. keep trying to make as much eye contact and give i mean maybe maybe you can reassure me i am finding this really tiring <laughs> it's completely exhausting. <laughs> I feel as if the amount of sort of, I mean, t t teaching, a lot of teaching is about putting energy into the room, isn't it? And sort of, especially when students are coming, your students are coming from all kinds of stuff because they're often working or full time doing, you know, something else. Our students, that's less common, but still, you know, they're sort of coming with all kinds of, you've, you've got to put a lot of energy into it. So I'm sort of used to that, but I am finding that the, the the online teaching actually a real suck of suck of energy because however much you put into the room the room can't kind of yeah drifts away doesn't it in a way the room can't hold it or can't i find it really hard to get that to get that all going anyway that, that was part of me saying i find the chat and the talk sometimes a bit difficult to manage have you have you had good ways of doing that uh, well, I don't know that I've found good ways of doing it. <laughs> uh, I'm finding ways that I, I've kind of managed. Incidentally, I mean, a colleague of mine just mentioned that um, they've been doing team teaching so that they've had one person doing the actual talking and another person moderating the chat. And that sounds like it's actually worked quite well. So you're having kind of parallel conversations going on at the same time. Um, but I mean, I think it's a great idea, but it's obviously really labour intensive. And one of the things that's really difficult about this moment is that as teachers, we've all got different responsibilities outside of our classroom. And I think one of the things that's really stressful is it's it's hard for people to know. Um, 
I guess, well, it's hard to, to do the same kind of thing that you would be doing before because you literally don't have the same amount of time that you had before. So just as we've entered in a moment where we've got to reconceptualize the way we teach, we've also got less time available to do it. Uh, so I do think it's really important to keep sharing ideas so we can steal from one another and try and sort of save time wherever possible. Um, but anyway, sorry, that was a bit of a digression. So what I've been doing with chat, um, it, it's been a little bit more, um, I guess strategic maybe so um, in seminar sessions I've been having to record the seminar sessions because a lot of my students can't make the live ones because a lot of them have children or they're they're now having to go to work at strange times um, and so the chat is quite a nice way for them not to have to use their voice over the microphone when when something's being recorded um, and that's meant I've been sort of reading out their comments so we're, we're having the discussion in a, in a way it, it sort of slows things down in quite a useful way and I think it gives us time to think a little bit more about everybody's comment um, and it's also meant and, and this is something I've come to quite gradually um, my first online session I suddenly remembered exactly how I felt when I first started teaching and I realized that I talk non-stop and that I was going to have to tell myself to just be quiet and that silence was okay um, and I, I realized something similar was happening online where I particularly because I was sort of terrified that the technology was breaking or that other students would assume that the, the technology was breaking so I found it useful to sort of step back a little bit and say okay everybody just at the beginning of this session so you know there are going to be silent moments where you do a bit of thinking and where we all kind of reflect um, so so just don't worry about those silent moments and I've been encouraging people who are kind of recording what's going on to, to sometimes press pause and, and have a bit of a think themselves um, and I, I what I think the chat's quite useful for is it, it takes people to write things down and I think if we, we've all sort of accepted there's going to be a break it it just calms things down a bit and, and makes space for a bit more reflection Mm, that's a really, that's a, yeah, that's a really, really good tip. What what other things have you found? Uh, yeah, um, uh, what other things have you been doing? So um, we've been also trying to think of ways to make sure people can engage if they're if they're not able to take part in the live sessions. Uh, because I guess one of the things I'm really conscious of at this moment is that it's it's another way in which inequalities and disadvantages are just getting exacerbated and obviously I have no answers to that at the moment but I'm just trying as far as possible to, to sort of think what can we do from the beginning to try and mitigate some of that so we've been trying to make sure that we have um moment or, or sort of online materials that people can engage with in their own time so that they're not having to join the live sessions so uh I've been doing, I, I set up, and this is totally in homage to Andy Kesson at Roehampton and Callum Davis at, at Roehampton, uh, a Moodle quiz, so just a, an online quiz. And initially I found that quite hard to conceptualise because you, you sort of, you set up the quiz and effectively it's a multiple choice thing and you sort of think, well that doesn't really work for English, how, how can we do that? Um, but I, I had a course where the students were, would, it's a, a survey renaissance course, they were just coming to the the theatre section and I I thought actually I can there are certain facts or, or sort of terms that I want to get uh, them to, to be thinking about so I embedded readings so the Andrew Gurr piece on theatre from the Cambridge world uh, the Shakespeare's world thing on the Cambridge core platform that's open access at the moment so you set them a reading and then take them through questions like you know what is a boy player or giving them a picture of the DeWitt sketch and getting them to identify things and it's quite nice because then in the answers um, you, you can then put a bit more reflection up and ask them to think about how they might use that kind of information in an essay um, so that's one thing and then another thing is uh, setting up a wiki page which is something our um, our online and learning environment allows us to do uh, but I think anyone could do it with a google document and that's where one of the things I've been finding quite frustrating is it's harder to do group work in seminars and I normally do that quite a lot it's quite useful for our um, for our students especially if someone doesn't feel confident talking in class 
but if you set up a, a wiki page they can work collaboratively but in, they don't have to get together they can sort of do it in their own time so for example um to take romeo and juliet's first meeting where they share that sonnet you can have a page where you ask two or three of them to write something about how this sonnet reworks traditional sonnet features how does gender play out differently in that structure and then another page where you ask them to come up with um ways in which it's been reworked in performance so i might send them to garrick or the baz Luhrmann film or something or get another page where another group is looking at religion and, and get them to think about what does pilgrim mean here or shrine and that's just a way that they can they can work on that in their own time and ideally it's encouraging active learning rather than me just giving them stuff um but yeah that sort of asynchronous stuff is is actually i've come to think of that as really important whereas in the past, I suppose I had thought I'd kind of idealized the, the contact session as the sort of intellectual high point. And in some ways, actually, I guess one of the many things that's been difficult about this is letting go of that and thinking this is I, I can't I probably never could. And I probably can't in this environment do that. But so one 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 top, one thing that's worked really well for me in this disposition which i tried before in face to face which and, and never really got to work well is things like peer marking oh right you know that really really well in google docs and they seem much more able to comment um kind of constructively but um uh but quite penetratingly if they're all working together on a google doc or uh, and that's been actually really good for writing mm -hmm. so in some ways i think some of the some of the techniques have been better for strangely better for developing writing than being face to face has done that so that has worked well so google setting them up in in pairs or or threes um to comment on each other's um work and sometimes to comment on it in relation to um a kind of marking scheme or a kind of set of criteria that the course might use um but sometimes just in relation to um uh certain kind of writing skills like how does the how how effective is the introduction and all that all that kind of stuff so that's that's been good um one um yeah one more synchronous thing i've been doing and this i think is really useful for maybe postgraduate students or master's students or maybe senior senior year um undergraduates who are writing dissertations is i've been trying to do with them um something I've seen done really well with um, sort of uh, PhD students and uh, early career colleagues, which is writing accountability, which you see sometimes people do on Twitter. Um, and we've just been doing it. We've been doing it, doing it via Zoom. Um, they, we, we all Zoom in for 15 minutes and talk about, sort of touch base a bit, but also talk about what we want to achieve over the next two hours we're setting as the period. And then we go offline and then two hours later we come back uh, back on zoom just for a short time and and um sort of uh account for what we've done and sort of set, set some goals for the next thing and i'm finding i'm finding that useful for one of the things that i think that there isn't quite an equivalent for that in what i would do if we were in sort of face-to-face -face session and I'm, I'm really wary of adding in things that we do to try and compensate for the situation we're in because that's just a i mean that way madness lies we're all working really hard to adjust and we've got other things going on as well but nevertheless i found the two hours quite useful for myself you know that they carve it out for them but i carve it out for me uh too and it is something which um kind of um tries to recapture the sort of camaraderie of doing all doing our individual work but not all doing it in a completely isolated way yeah. that you can get if you're all together uh, if you just meet for a coffee or something before the seminar you can just have a sense of what you're doing um all together um so in some ways it, it, it tries to sort of fill in a more so not just a social purpose but a kind of social academic um academic purpose um and i guess and the other thing i've been doing like this i've been trying to do a lot of stuff by audio rather than video it slightly weaned me off my um, PowerPoint, um, sort of PowerPoint obsession or um, PowerPoint addiction, thinking it's it's quite a lot more difficult in our lecture upload system to sort of to, to, to do to do those 
um, put those things side by side. And I've done some of the recordings I've done have been more like things I would have done off the cuff, maybe in an early seminar, just talking around a particular topic or a particular, or talking through the reading list or talking through the assignment. And I've done that as just quite a short bit of audio, like seven or eight minutes or something, rather than big sort of set piece, um, set piece lecture. I mean, that sounds fantastic. And I, it, I was interested there in, in terms of focus, because I suppose the, the shorter piece I can see being quite appealing at the moment, because lots of my students have been talking about how hard they find it just to sit down and concentrate. And I am with them on that. It, you know, it's, it's just really difficult um, to concentrate at the moment. And actually, I, I haven't done it yet, but I'm hoping to try out something a bit similar to what you were saying about that, uh, the writing accountability. Um, our students have exams coming up. And obviously the exams are going to be very different from normal. So normally the students would be quite anxious about uh, exams and now they're anxious about them in a different way because it's this odd sort of take home format. So how do you prepare for that? Um, so we're, we're going to do a session where we sort of all get together but then kind of go offline for about an hour and they're just first of all just working on quotations and one of the things I've been wrestling with a little bit is is trying to make sure I'm not being too prescriptive and and I'm not sort of telling people exactly what to do at any given moment but at the same time recognizing that there are some students who do welcome a bit of structure and especially welcome a bit of structure at the moment uh, so I've been trying to sort of th this is more of a voluntary session and so people can kind of drop into it or out of it as as they like um, but yeah I, I think finding focus at the moment is really hard and I, I, I don't know I, I feel like I'm not in a position to know how to tell people to, to find focus at this unprecedented moment um, and I guess one of the things I've been trying to, to suggest to people is is just to try and notice for yourselves what works and what doesn't work because obviously everyone's different so for example I know that I can no longer listen to the news on the radio in the morning that that can set me up for a really terrible day um, I just have to sort of read it at a set time whereas I have a friend for whom that would be really anxiety inducing not to be kind of keeping up to date with things so I have been trying to suggest to students that they're just kind of really aware of the things that that sort of trigger them in unhelpful ways um, and, and just try and manage that information or, or use the information they build up um, mm -hmm. but yeah I don't know yeah and I think I one of the things that has actually I think I found helpful taking my own advice I haven't I haven't found it very easy to give them advice and one of the things I've been more sort of playing on I think is that we were all of us doing this in in a way that we didn't imagine doing it when none of us are finding it very easy um, I mean not as a kind of plea for sympathy but just as a sort of fellow feeling um, uh, I, I have found it I've been I, I, we've been talking about just setting this is I mean this is really good advice isn't it for focusing at any point just setting really specific things that you're going to do so not gonna read a bit of this or i'm gonna sort of do this quite um vague tax task but i'm going to read this article and um extract you know half a page of notes or something from it and then i've done it that i've, I've achieved it um, and here's the article i don't have to start the session by sort of looking around for it and where is it and you know sort of setting you know set, setting things up so you're ready to work because i can i mean I can do that at the best of times and these are not three things. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, that was a really key part of my dealing with this situation uh, was making sure I had a, clear, a clean desk for the next day just so that there's at least a small bit. And again, though, that's, that's something else that everybody's having to juggle with. So I know uh, with, with my partner, we're having to keep sort of switch rooms. There's basically two rooms in the flat that work work but one of them has the modem in and the other one doesn't so you're kind of having to um switch over depending on on who needs what um and i think i think it is helpful to be open with students about that um as, as long as like you say it's, it's not in a sort of self-pitying way but just sort of saying right this is the situation how this is how i've managed this but asking everybody to share the sorts of things that are working for them a lot of my students are noting that putting their phone in a different room is um, is helpful. Yeah. 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 
So any plans for the, uh, how, how much longer have you got of teaching this, this, this session? Oh, so we are on week two and we go up to, to week 11. Um, but, oh, longer than us. We're well, week no, two. I mean, that, the sort of caveats, because I think our, the actual teaching for, for undergraduates will finish much sooner. Um, the marking will carry on. Um, yeah. Whereabouts are you? We've got another six weeks. So we've just started our third term so we've done pretty much now two weeks of the new the sort of new dispensation so we were very late to the party because we'd we'd already finished for the easter and but we're going to go on a little bit further yeah so there's um has, has your sense been over the time you've been teaching online that what's important is to keep a um keep keep expectations and keep a pattern and to keep to make things kind of comfortable and and kind of reassuring that this is how we do it or has it been more to kind of shake things up or yeah keep, keep differently so we i think well what i've been doing and i don't know whether this is right or, or wrong at the moment is actually sticking to a pattern um so so i've always made sure apart from the very first week so so we we went into a kind of lockdown on the Friday Friday night and then we were teaching again on the Monday so I, I did not have an online seminar ready to go that Monday that did not happen but but beyond that um, yeah I, I have been sticking to, to kind of live sessions although I would say you know that not a high proportion of students haven't been able to get to them but I felt it's been quite useful for the ones who are able to to do it to, to have a kind of regular slot um, and like I say I've just kind of recorded everything so people can can get to them in their own time um, and hopefully that will work but it's I, what I've been kind of worrying about and I, again I'm not quite sure what the right answer is what to do about the people who haven't been able to engage at all and and kind of wanting to make contact with them without them feeling like they're being told off um, you know sort of doing that that kind of pastoral care uh so we, with a couple of them i've, I've sort of I, I think it's important to to kind of try and get in touch but let them know that this isn't now about where's your essay it's just we're, we're keeping in contact so that they know there's still a support structure um available for them i don't know how, how about you yeah i mean we yeah because we're um i suppose because we we have quite small, small numbers in this um normally in this highly residential environment you know we don't expect our students to miss you know to miss sessions or to not be there or something mm -hmm. and we come down on that quite quickly just because of the sort of scale at which we normally work and so i suppose we are still doing that really i mean one of the things i've said to the students is we need we do need to keep in touch in a sort of grown up way about what we're asking you to do and whether it's reasonable. Mm. Um, and, you know, there are sort of difficulties about that, aren't there? That, that I think our tendency, well, there are lots of pressures on us to deliver everything we would have done or possibly even more somehow to, to, to sort of uh, make up for what's not happening. Um, it may be an environment in which most of our students can't actually respond to that and, and that, I don't know, doing 70% of it would be better, yeah. would be better sort of in the round than doing 100% of it. Um, I, I think that will unfold for me um, we, because we normally, in, in, in my university system, we expect a lot of um, sort of non non assessed work or you know formative mm. assessed work that's not summative and that it has been in the in the sort of um history of, te of teaching in in oxford has been a really sort of crucial part of of how that works but uh, and easy to defend in all kinds of pedagogical ways but if people don't do it you can't really say that they have failed a, a module or a unit or anything like that um and thinking about how how flexible how, where to be flexible and supportive as you you know in some ways as as you always would be and where to be um trying to hold a line that says yeah you need to push yourself a bit perhaps you don't feel you know 
perhaps you feel maybe you know your parents were right and you should have tried to do medicine or you know we should be trying to look for a vaccine and who cares about you know who cares about King Lear or something who cares about Thomas Nash um uh you know sometimes we've just got to sort of push push a bit and say yeah we are we're still doing this yeah. um so we'll, I'll see how that I'll see how that unfolds over the next uh the next few weeks yeah no I do think I think it's really it's really important to kind of keep track of of who's doing what and and to sort of yeah just check those patterns of engagement um and I think ideally for for, for the people who you know who aren't sick or or aren't completely overwhelmed by caring for the three kids I think actually it is a, quite a positive thing I think once they sort of get that engagement I think it does help focus and I think it does help you manage the situation so it's it's kind of both important in and of itself for the reasons why you signed up for the course in, in the first place but actually it is a really good way of managing this situation as well. Um, I don't know whether because your students have made such an important and invested choice to, to return to education and so I've got a different a different take on the on why they're doing it whereas um, my, I mean my, my students have too but but they've also been um, sort of drilled through uh, a, a school system and exams and university system and exams and stuff um, and I guess and I'm not particularly worried by this because I don't think our uh, as teachers in a way, well, it's a great luxury not to worry about this too much, but what about naughty students? <laughs> so there are students who are sort of having got difficulties and real difficulties and real problems at home of all sorts, but then somehow there are just naughty people who aren't really doing anything. <laughs> and then maybe they just have to be let, do you think we just have to let that go? Probably we do. Yeah. It's a really distinguish, isn't it? The difference between naughtiness and yeah and what lies behind the naughtiness <laughs> whether whether there is some real issues lying behind it yeah i don't i don't know i mean my my um i just have you been worried about this idea that people have got two people have talked to me about this in the last couple of days that actually people turn their micro turn their video off and in fact they just leave they're still logged in but they disappear <laughs> I'm glad you're as shocked about that as i am but paul but when yeah. I, heard about that, I thought oh gosh um, I, I suppose my instincts have been so much about how we can help with the difficulties of this situation that I haven't thought so much about the other side of that and that might be the case for some people in their classrooms about how the sort of more enforcement side you know what are we doing about, about that yeah yeah no so I don't so I, I mean my sense is that if I had a really naughty student, they probably just wouldn't bother logging in in the first place. So I have, I have found the ones who have logged in. I mean, and I have to say, just completely heroic. Uh, a lot of my students. I mean, the, the, the things that they've, they've been, you know, like I say, work, looking after families, and then still kind of showing up for the seminars and engaging. Um, that's been really impressive. And so I have found that they, they've been fairly interactive. And you, I. I guess even with things like lectures, because I, I don't pre-record my lectures, I, I sort of I do them in real time, but our lectures are always quite long, so they're um they're an hour and twenty minutes. And I personally would never talk for an hour and twenty minutes anyway, you know, that that's just too much of my voice for anybody, myself included. Um so what I've been uh doing is as I normally would, you sort of stop after about twenty minutes and I, I kind of there's a kind of poll function so you can you can ask a, a sort of contentious question and get them to vote and then you take a step back and ask them to think about it but that does mean you can keep an eye on who's there I suppose I hadn't thought of it in that way but you can you can yeah. sort of see who's engaging and I, I guess trying to keep the sessions as sort of interactive as possible is is a way around that um, and it, again this is something I'm sort of really feeling my way with in seminars is trying to kind of make sure everyone has responsibility for something without feeling like you're singling someone out because in a room um you know i do feel like it's okay to, to call on a particular person yeah. because I, I sort of feel all right to judge them and once i've got to know them i, I kind of know that i'm not going to sort of terrify someone and, and you can feel it out but yeah. over, over the over um a digital platform it's much harder to kind of get a sense of where someone is and what it would mean to put someone on the spot um so yeah i think 
trying to sort of I, I do find like the kind of the vote function so everyone just kind of takes a position on something and then you open it up and it, it does seem to I feel at least even if someone doesn't want to to speak up or, or kind of give a very detailed response I, I can see that they're they're clicking in at some level that they're they're engaging in, in that way yeah and I, I didn't mean to say I don't think it's um I don't think it's the biggest problem that faces us in this no, in, 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 I think it's absolutely isn't it that people have got all kinds of st stuff I mean practical and sort of psychological stuff to deal with at this at, you know while we're in this situation yeah um do you think that do you think that's as far as we can go yeah I think so I think so and yeah there's a lot still to come isn't there so there's a lot yeah and and but it is really useful to sort of capture this um quite intense kind of learning period for all of us isn't it and as you say to try and uh share tips and not not all be kind of re reinventing it i think that's really that's really great yeah I lo I've, I've loved hearing about that yeah and i'm definitely going to use those um quizzes i think and i might try the wiki as opposed to my google docs um yeah that's brilliant no and i absolutely want to try the um the the accountability session as well i think selfishly for me as well i think that that would be a really helpful yeah, yeah. <laughs> while i was looking at it in my diary and thinking oh my god i've got all of tuesday morning out doing that and then i realized oh no actually, <laughs> so you know, i've got this big block of time i could do something in yeah brilliant it's really good to speak to you yeah you take care and to you thank you yeah.